Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our weekly angel reading for the week of June 26th through July 2nd, 2023. So before we begin, I'd just like to thank all of you who are returning um, to this weekly series and to also welcome anyone who's new to our angelic wisdom community. I'd just like to ask you to, um, and to remind you as well, to subscribe, um, to select the all notification bell to make sure it's still um, checked, and to also like, dislike, and leave comments. So I really appreciate all of the comments that have been um, coming through and some of your, um, there's just so many incredible insights into the reading or how it's um, resonating in your life. And I think it's really incredibly powerful and, um, and helpful to others as, as well as to myself. So thank you very much for that. Also, if you, looking for angel reading with me and you feel called to do that, um, you can go to my current website, theangelschool.com slash services. That link will be below um, in the description area of this video. Also, if you just like to donate to my channel, you can go to my PayPal me link, um, which you can also find below as well. And I think finally, um, but well, there's a, just a few other things. Of course, we're already at the end of the month again, as we just said, and so I will be working on the um, monthly reading for July, the general monthly reading, as well as the um, monthly angel scopes for the different zodiac signs. So just keep a lookout for that. I know it's um, the, Fourth of July holiday, week, holiday weekend is coming up, um, so we have a lot going on. <laughs> um, also, the day I'm recording will be Pride a weekend here in New York City um, or in the country, so I'm um, happy Pride to everyone as well. All right, so let's take a deep breath and just tune it into your heart space, your heart chakra. And just allow yourself to breathe with the frequency of that chakra. Just tuning in to the frequency of this chakra. And just notice some of the things that are coming up in your awareness mentally. And this might even be on a global level, depending on where your heart frequency is, where it's tuned in or dialed into. Some of you might, your heart chakras might be attuned to the global collective awareness and some of you to specific communities or a specific situation. And I was just seeing a lot of random words like justice, respect. There were some words earlier that I can't remember, but be aware. Oh, I saw like the word lack. So some people are focused on a lack um, or you, you might be tuned in. So make sure that you are tuned into the things um, that you have an intention for tuning into something. Make sure you're just not being drawn into things. 
And now I'm going to invite you to tune into your I am presence. So to specifically tune your heart into the frequency of your I am presence. And they ask you to just take a few sighs. Just breathe in and sigh. Ah. And just do a few more of those. Breathing in. Ah. And just one more. Allow yourself to stretch. If that's where your body takes you. And just releasing energy from your body in that stretch. Letting things go. So as you tune into your I am presence, that you are more relaxed now throughout your entire body. And just tune into the frequency now of your higher wisdom. Seeing certain things that have occurred from a higher perspective. Being open to viewing them differently. Seeing the, the signs, the potential, the lessons. Re reframing it through a consciousness of unconditional love. Understanding that the universe never sees what you see. It doesn't see failure. It doesn't see mistakes. It just sees you on a journey. And that way, we're not, for the human perspective, just washing over anything, but we're definitely open to incorporating that higher wisdom. You're on a journey today. You're on a journey this week. You're on a journey this month, or you have been. And it reminded me, the writing of the word safe, that you are safe. And they write you. You are safe. You are safe on any journey that you found yourself on, no matter how you got there, if you tripped there, if you fell there, if you messed up really badly to get there. You're safe in this journey because every journey is an, opportun an opportunity for you to turn things around, an opportunity for you to learn, to grow. Most importantly, every journey collects wisdom. Now, by understanding that you're on a journey rather than a detour or a mistake or a failure. When you understand that you're on a journey, you make your path safer for you. And the safety that you should be seeking is not on the outside, not in the external world, but the peace within yourself. This is how you secure a sense of safety. Because in this way, the world is not out to get you. And you're not 
sabotaging yourself or screwing it up on purpose or unintentionally. You've fallen into lessons. You're here to learn. That was always the purpose. You're here to learn through exploration and sort of restraining the self doesn't really fully allow for that purpose to manifest. You can't learn and you won't explore if you're afraid. If you're afraid that the hammer is going to drop in judgment against you and doom you to some god-awful place. This is not the purpose for our lives. This is not a, a context of mind or frame of mind that we should be living in. Or relegating ourselves to. Because the thing is, Without love, you do you can't know just how free you are. And you won't recognize all the choices, all the doors, many doors, infinite doors that you can walk through at any point in your life, at any point of your dissatisfaction or satisfaction you still have choices, unlimited, to walk through, to change the course. But instead of trying to change the course to get away from, focus on exploring, focus on the journey and exploration, because this makes it more reasonable to your resistant ego if your mindset is of one of exploration of a journey that you see your life as one continuous journey and you see all of your choices as explorations this keeps the past from becoming baggage you don't need to carry it with you. You carry the enlightenment from it within your heart and your soul and your imagination. It be and in this way, it becomes fuel to inspire greater passions for life, for that life journey and for that exp exploration. We're holding each other back. When you hold yourself back, you hold others back. So when we judge one another, we are holding each other back, We're restraining all the possibilities, all the choices, we're conditioning our minds. And so that's why many people in a community like this, who sets limits on one another, are rarely satisfied or happy and become grumpy and cranky and complainers. We hold each other back. And even if you find yourself able to live above it a little, enough that it makes you feel different, but you will find that the, pe the, that the community you're surrounded by, you know, is still able to kind of get inside your head and you do a little bit of complaining about them.
it's because we were never meant to be in this way, to 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 live in this way. We're communities about cooperation, about respect, about tolerance. But you don't give that first to others. You give it to yourself because the reason we project intolerance and those other types of things is because we haven't really reap the benefit of the giving ourselves this so that we know and under can uh, really appreciate the ability to be able to give this as a gift or blessing what it truly is to others because the blessing is that you allow them to be themselves to be authentic and that is really where one can truly find unlimited satisfaction. Because if you're just being yourself, there's no room to judge. And then there's only room to explore, to become. So how do you tap into this for yourself and for the community or your family or the planet on a collective level? How do you remain true to yourself while caring for others? I don't know if this is the question that they're getting at. But often, I think we find it difficult to go outside of ourselves and be ourselves and to understand and to be tolerant and understanding and compassionate, compassionate for others. Because it's like when we get out there, it's like there's a different button or a different, something different going on and you can't control it. And the thing you fear the most is that you're going to make yourself miserable. So some people tend to sort of um, stay in, isolate themselves from the outer world because they don't want their spiritual peace to be disrupted. But being able to go out there and be yourself and be aware of what you can offer. Being aware of, uh, I guess it's really about respecting because they just wrote that word. If we don't know how to respect because we don't really respect ourselves and what we are, we're still struggling with that because we're wanting everyone else or few people out there to validate us, to appreciate us the way we are. But everybody else out there wants the same thing. And that might be the first bit of understanding about how to apply respect, just to remember that whether you agree or disagree, they want you to respect them too, to make them feel like they, what they have to say is important or what they to validate some of the things that they believe or think. But none of us has to do that. And all of that is sort of Again, instead of being yourself, you're spending energy wanting others or wanting something outside of you to say it's okay. So while one thing is happening, the other is not. So you, ha you have to choose. You have to choose. And those are the people who, the people who have chosen are the people that most people dislike. 
because they have a certain confidence. Maybe we perceive it as arrogance when someone chooses to be themselves without apology. Maybe we're just not used to that level of self-awareness and self-respect. There's a lot of things out there that are never going to sit right because of things not sitting right within ourselves about ourselves. I'm sure there are times when you have marveled at a person with this ability. And that's a good sign. Because it means that you are approaching this within yourself. It means, at the very least, that you're receptive to it. And you respect that person because you can respect this within yourself. Or that it's a journey that you definitely would like to be on. And I just feel that we can't let this kind of internal stuff hold us back any longer. That what we have to recognize if we're really working towards a world of peace and cooperation is that there's a lot of this kind of stuff. It's good stuff though, isn't it? as we talk about it, when we recognize what it really is. See, there are no mistakes, there's a journey. And we're on a journey. The world, no matter how insane it feels and out of control and ominous, we're on a journey. We've never gotten off that journey. We get distracted, but the journey continues even while you're being distracted, you're learning. Information is always being assimilated and processed, digested by you and your soul, your whole entire being, your body, everything. There is nothing that you do not gain from. There is no loss or failure or mistake that you do not gain from. Your journey is a win-win. It always has been. It is only this kernel of your mind that's so tiny, but has the ability to overshadow everything and leave you with this one perspective, the ego I'm talking about, that overshadows all of this and makes you focus so narrowly on or through the a lens of criticism and because because we've gotten used to it and because we perpetuate it by our actions and our inability to respect authenticity and not to make it, the ego does is, you know, makes it seem vulgar, vulgar, and as in arrogance and so much, so many other things. But all of that is holding us back. And so each and every one of us in this spiritual community, we need to get out there more and put it to practice. Yeah, you're not going to be perfect about it. Because it's very easy to be isolated and maintain your own energy. But even you might have witnessed now that that's becoming very difficult because the universe is pushing us into the action, the time of action that we came here 
to achieve and to accomplish for the planetary ascension. So you cannot do that hiding away from people that you don't want to deal with. You may not, through words, be able to convince somebody of what you would like them to know or be convinced by. But if you respect yourself and if you're authentic and if you show up, you will give them an opportunity to see what it is, to feel what it is that you would like to convince them of. And by your example, by your passing through, you alter some detail, no matter how small or great, that activates within them, and they just keep writing this word, a respect for one another. Because maybe that's the core of the ascension process, that humanity learns to develop a respect for every thing and every one that was created by its origin, the source, God. Because when we are able to do that, we will actually be able to clearly know God, source, the, this origin. We can't see the origin until all the pieces are loved, all of its components. It gave of itself in billions and billions of souls. And all of those souls are stuck in a veil of illusion, shouting at each other, fighting with each other, when they're all the same God. And until they respect each other, they will not be able to see it, see their truth, see the bigger picture. This um, reminds me when I was probably nine years old and I come from church and, you know, the minister probably really went off about gay people and and I, you know, the hell thing, and I was so terrified, and and I think I was crying and silently in my room because I shared it with my brothers, but I had the room alone at that moment, and I was just telling this to someone last weekend, haven't thought about it in a long time, and all of a sudden, a, the sunlight, the way it just came through my window with the curtains, my mom usually had, you know, shears and and then curtains, so it wasn't a very easy thing, but. And then this thought came to me. And I think, I wouldn't say it's my first angel experience, but I just, you know, the way that it touched me at nine years old, the way it reasoned with me, you know, it didn't come from me because I was in the depths of my despair. But what it said, the voice said, was that each and every one of us is like a puzzle piece that makes up the face of God. And if one puzzle piece is missing, not accepted, or whatever shape or form respected, then we can't see the face of God. So that it made me understand that I, the way I was, was necessary in order for the complete picture of God to be. And I think that is something that can apply to many different people in many different situations. And especially when we decide to judge and criticize each other because you're just doing it to yourself. And the mirrors of illusion will keep 
just reflecting this back and forth until, until we cease to do it by loving one another. And loving, a component of loving one another starts with respect. Respect for authenticity. Be learning to discern or recognize that. All right, let's take a look at the Archangel that we're working with. The Archangel of Integrity, Archangel Michael. And Archangel Michael has also been given charge over our life purpose to support anyone in their life purpose and especially light workers. So and our what and our really important purpose right now is to learn to respect each other. This is why I felt that this month of Pride Month was so important and that as a, a, this group we this is the gift we give to the world. this gift of learning to respect even when you don't under, understand and to respect the authenticity of the way that we were made as well as the way that you were made and any other group of people on the planet. We, we can end this war within ourselves because that's where it's starting. You think it's about the person that you disagree with, but it's starting within. There's some war going on within when you cannot respect or be happy or you are easily upset or unnerved or unraveled by what someone else does. And I'm gonna say this is across the board. There are things that make us all angry there are things that have happened politically on both sides that make both sides angry. But respect, if we were learning that and practicing that and honoring what all that it means, we would be more cooperative. We would find ways to work together. But the, all the judgment just escalates the hype and takes us further from the truth and further into illusions. All right, so the card says, stand in your power. And what is the last word, message there? Be true to yourself. I mean, this is everything in terms of integrity. This is everything in terms of how you experience your life, how you experience your, your journey and how clear your life purpose will be. So it's the shedding of the, the self, the, 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 the identities that are just sort of put on, shedding of the mask, better way to say it, that allows you to be more clear about what you desire and what you want. And therefore, your purpose comes out of that clarity. There's no other way to achieve it. You, you can try to go to somebody to get them to tell you what it is, like me, or, or go to a, a, a therapist. And I'm not saying do not do that, because <laughs> that's one way that you get to the clarity. but we often want the answer without first taking the journey, accepting the journey. If you're confused, then you need to begin a journey of authenticity in order to find clarity, get rid of the masks. All right, let's take a look at the, this card, the lover's card. And for me, um, when the lover's card comes up, 
this is at the soul level. It could mean that someone that's coming into your life is a soulmate like relationship, meaning that this is an alignment, this is something, um, and they're right, I don't know why they're writing the word universal, but they want you to think of this universally. When we when they say soulmate, um, this is something that is spiritual alignment, a spiritual agreement or contract. So that this was one of those things that you put on your outline before incarnating. And if it's not an event like this, which is not really where I was going with, but I wanted to explain that first. Um, it feels like that this is a moment or time for an event that was pre-planned on your timeline. Okay? So that something is coming together, an integration of self where whether where you're really being true to your heart this could be within the relationship within yourself or with others with community the collective with your with the journey maybe something on the journey right now is something you really need to first of all honor no matter what it looks like so if you're stuff is full of, <laughs> you know, junk. You need to honor this right now because where you are in your journey is important. It is uniquely important in terms of that timeline. This is not about everything that's beautiful and wonderful and spiritual. It's all spiritual. It's all wonderful. It's all beautiful. And we learn this through art or the arts in general. I mean, when I first heard Schoenberg, I didn't think that was beautiful. But once I learned about the his music, the the the, the tonal scales and all the, you know, then it became art. It's not beautiful like Puccini but it's still beautiful. The card says, love allows your soul to feel free. And in this way, there's a sense of, if we learn to love, we set our souls free. We open ourselves up to a whole new dimension of possibilities and experiences. So it is to your advantage that you practice this kind of love that they've been talking about, respect. And that if you are the kind of person who feels that you do, then go out there and give yourself the opportunity to do it because you're ready. There's no more waiting or let me do this let me get this right no it's time now this is followed by the hangman which is interesting because six plus six is twelve right hmm. and the hangman i'm going to read this as not contradicting this card but reversal as for me, I was just thinking about this, so it's interesting it came up. I consider this the reverse, the major arcana reversal, which may be a reason why people have chosen to read reversals, because we have one in the major arcana. It was introduced to us in the major arcana, the concept of reversals. The way that I'm gonna to choose to read it, because the way it was coming to my mind out of, for some reason, before, I started because a card fell out and it, it came upside down. And the, look at the reversal cards as the universe telling you to pay attention to the internal world. Where And so the, a reading 
for that card is about internal perspective, internal reality, whereas the upright cards are focused on what's happening in the external world. But always the understanding is that what when you're viewing that upright card, it is a reflection of the internal because everything starts there. But maybe you, um, but when it's reversed, there is an emphasis to go all the way in and just exclude the external mostly, right? Exclude it mostly and adjust yourself within. So here you're being asked to adjust your perspective, made possibly about what you think love is. You need to see it because now what we all think love is, is this very rosy picture. Everything's perfect. There's no harm. There's no disagreement. And the universe, in order to understand, because many of us, we've heard in, in our lifetimes, over the, the days and years of our lifetime, when something goes wrong, all of a sudden people don't understand and they blame God. Or they say, see, there is no God or there is no spiritual world because why would this happen? Or I had a really awful experience in my life and I almost died or I failed really horribly and I you know, lost everything and I am an unsuccessful person. And you know, what God, okay, you get my point. So we have to look at these experiences from the internal gain. What did I gain from this? And what does love... And so if everything is a journey, if the journey is what it's all about, not how well you succeeded or not, if love isn't perfect all the time, and so this allows us to be able to love people that we don't understand. If it helps us to, to love or respect, or if it offers a gesture of respect that helps us to find ourselves in a place of having love for somebody and still maybe being disgusted or 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 not getting them, but you feel this love. And that's not what we normally expect. I can't tell you exactly how it's going to be for you, but there is something in this sort of, like, like right now, as I can say, the chaos in the world. Chaos is a sign of change. And change is a sign of love, meaning that the universe is offering you an opportunity to experience things from a different way. It's almost like that those games when you can scramble, you know, when you you can push this little thing so that it'll scramble it, re-scramble the pieces where they were, if it's letters or, or you know, whatever it's the board is placed and on the game there, you can push the little thing and it'll, it'll reconfigure everything to give you a, some other hope, right, of seeing, seeing another move that you couldn't see. And sometimes the chaos, well, no, it does. It, it's like that. It gives us that chance to see other moves we didn't see before. 
Because when everything is orderly and perfect, you can't see anything else but that. And the thing that may not be perfect is how you fit into that perfection. But in the chaos, you get, there's unlimited ways for you to figure out where you fit. And right now, we're all trying to figure out how we fit together on this planet. And that's why it's really heated right now. And that's a blessing because what it's done is it's brought out all these different movements that became activated. Everything that's gone wrong on this planet has triggered an act of love, has triggered a whole new perspective, a whole new paradigm, a shift. And that's what I'm getting at. And I think that's what they're getting at. So the card says, when surrender happens, suffering is released. When surrender happens, suffering is released. And that's why I've been really sharing with you about the practice of surrender is so, so important. And this is interesting because I had mentioned the justice card or justice earlier when I was seeing the collective. And it feels like we have three major arcana cards here. And it feels like what it's saying is that until this process that we're going through right now is not only shifting, but restoring balance. One, in terms of karma, if you want to think about that in that way, everything right now is coming full circle so that we can prepare to be in balance with one another. Now, when we're in balance, you have two different scales. So that means that love encompasses our differences. And that is probably the definition of respect. And we can really respect that when we honor who we truly are, when we allow ourselves to be who we are without looking for somebody else to say it's okay. The card says, you reap what you sow. And in that, some people will continue to do what they've always done. They will not get the respect piece. And they will get what they've always been getting. Just like we're getting what we've always been putting out there. And so we have to make that decision for ourselves. Okay, I'm going to pull a card from the bottom of the deck. And it's the Eight of Swords. So there's this feeling of being in a trap. It says, being free is a state of mind. And it's so interesting because I saw the word mental um, in my meditation. So... I don't know. It almost feels like because of the emotions and and the, the physical things that we see, we feel like we can't see it any other way, can't think about it any other way. But that, that mental um, aspect, there is such flexibility. There's such, you know, thoughts beliefs I don't know for but I, for me it's always been easy to sort of oh I see you know when people are talking um and I'm always open to it I can understand probably in areas where I'm not how other people on the bigger issues that I just can't see but the point is is that oftentimes I find that our mind, um, the way we think about things, like oh, recently it was something I was thinking about. It could be a simple thing, like I got to go do the laundry, or, and in in my mind I make it like this huge burden, 
And instead of that, it could be an adventure because what do I, you know, going to the laundromat and doing the laundry, I don't know what could happen, who I could meet or um, what wonderful conversations I might have or something amazing I might see in the sky. I mean, you just don't know. But it's the mind's outlook, the mindset that it's the condition could be so easily changed just by the mindset. The physical doesn't have to change for you to have a completely different experience. So don't let your mindset block you, weigh you down, burden you. Think of ways to lift it up. And I know in one of the writings this week, um, for Tuesday, came was talking about, it was a fool card, just so you remember. And it was about adventures, you know, creating adventures by taking a day a week where you just decide that you're gonna do things differently. You're gonna break up your routines. On that day, you just break up your routines so that you open yourself up to being more flexible in your mindset because these patterns are formed in our beliefs and they kind of weigh us down eventually. I'm gonna to have to stop here because I don't want this to run out, but just be open this week as much as you can. All right, I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a beautiful week. God bless.